Hey, welcome to Jewel Shaman Art. This is just a short shoot showing how I developed some of the foliage on the headland. I'm doing a scene, it's called Bridport, so it's a real location uh, northeast Tassie. I've blocked it in just really roughly, okay, just so I know where things are heading. I picked up a fan brush, which I'm using at the moment. I don't always use those, um, but I am with this one today. <laughs> I thought it was quite befitting. I'm using forest green, a little bit of cad yellow um, and some white at the moment. And I'm just using the fan brush really quickly again, just to rough in some highlights. Have to think of where your light source is going to be. Mine is coming from pretty much, you can pretend it's like midday, maybe coming from the right a little bit more here, okay? I've got a flat brush here at the moment. I've gone back to picking up a darker colour, so just more forest green with a little bit of burnt umber in, just to really map out, you know, where I'm having the shadows, where I'm going to be popping some more branches in, um, where some more trees are going to go. This is actually going to end up being quite thick of foliage and lots of trees here. So where you see, you know, a lot of the sky through, in the end you actually won't. Um, so this is just a flat standard brush that I'm using, nothing fancy, don't need really expensive tools for here. Um, and I'm just kind of like pressing it in kind of different tech, different strengths, you know, sometimes hard, sometimes soft, different angles, using, you know, the flat of the brush, the tip of the brush, you know, kind of having it perpendicular, then more on an angle when I'm doing it, just to get different shapes and sizes. You really don't want anything regular when you're doing headlands like this. You don't want to end up with a nice, beautiful pattern. <laughs> you want it to look real, so you want the different shapes and sizes and, you know, thicker splodges and blobs everywhere. Because my style is more freestyle painting, um, you know, I don't kind of draw a picture and then paint it in after. Um, I paint as I go. This place to me is a really special spot that we quite often go on holidays. So I know this particular area quite well where I'm painting now. So it's done from memory. I'm not using a photo, okay? And because I'm painting as I go, I, I literally flitch from dark to light tones and I go back and forth. You know, some people like blocking in with just the darks and then come over with the lights and then that's all. But, you know, I kind of work back and forth between both I find that that really helps build up perspective and to get that realistic effect a lot more for me anyway, okay? There's no right and wrong when you paint. You've got to find your own style with what suits you. So I've just, I'm basically still using the same colour. This is forest green with cad yellow, which is more yellow, you know, really popping in some of these highlights here at the tops of the trees. So There's going to be a mixture of different types of trees here as well as, you know, lots of um, shrub in between and some grass in front of it. I find it really important when you are doing headland like this um, to help build up perspective. You need lots of different tones of the colour. Quite often I use, you know, the three-tone rule always seems really, really good and you can never really go wrong with that. But when I do the um, foliage like this and where there's lots of different kind of types of trees and vegetation. I tend to use a lot more than just three tones, okay? So basically with a forest green, burnt umber, cad yellow and tight white, I'll have a range of, you know, up to basically eight different tones with just those colours and just keep playing around with it. Every now and then you'll see me stand back a little bit further, okay? Obviously because I'm filming, I'm not standing directly in front of the painting, which is a bit dodge for me. So I'll, you'll see me stand back and have a look I'm just checking the perspective of, you know, where the light's actually hitting it to make sure it's, you know, congruent and makes sense a bit more. Working on the distant headland now, uh, I am darkening it at the moment, but, you know, eventually I do want it pushed back into the distance a little bit more. So again, you know, some people actually just block it in in that really light distant colour to start off with. I tend to not do that all the time, okay? I have different painting styles depending on the mood I'm in when I paint. In my head, this is actually going to be a little bit darker, the distant, the distant headland there, but I do want it a little bit foggy and misty as well to match that horizon and the clouds, which I'll be popping in a little bit later as well, okay? So I'm doing it a little bit darker now. Again, you'll see me working in different tones. I'll be going over it a little bit lighter highlighting some areas, 
mystifying it a little bit. And then I will come back in and put some shadows in again, okay? Just using the same flat brush here that I was before. And again, if you, you know, smudge it a little bit, never fear. You can just dip your um, finger in water a little bit and then wipe it off. If the surrounding paint layers are dry, you can actually just use a wet cloth or a wet brush to um, get rid of some paint if it's popped in somewhere you don't want. And you can see I'm quite often using my fingers there to like help smudge the paint out. I tend to do that a fair bit. It's really important when you're working with the cad yellows as well, you know, just be really careful. You shouldn't actually do that. You should be wearing gloves. A little bit slack with this. I don't recommend handling the cad yellows or reds. Be really cautious of that, okay? The other paints, um, I'm happy to do a little bit of finger work with. I'm feeling safe with them, but the cads, yeah, be careful, please. And then just coming back, adding some really, you know, highlights on these tips of the trees where the light source is really hitting and bouncing off. And as you can see, the perspective, you know, it's just building up the dimension here a little bit more. It still looks a little bit out of place. <laughs> it takes a few um, tonal values and layers until I'm really happy with stuff. You can see I'm just doing the foreground vegetation now, just the highlights on them, just popping a little bit, you know, of shape to them. Just kind of building up what I actually want and where. The brush I'm using now, it is a flat one, but it's a little bit of an older one. It's quite frayed. Um, which is actually really handy for just, you know, getting a little bit of added texture in. Uh, I tend to just use the tip of the brush in a dry brush technique. Although I'm not really brushing, I'm just kind of like dabbing it on and smudging it around a little bit. But when the brush is frayed, you can get some really good effects. And I'm just thickening up these the shrubby bits. Gone back to that distant headland now. You can see I'm just using a bit of a lighter colour on it. Popping a little bit of grass there now. Now I'll come back to redefine some of the trunks. Quite often when I do trees, I don't actually even add the trunks until the end. You'll see I'm adding quite a few new trunks there that weren't there before. I'm just highlighting them now a little bit. Really important to remember when you're doing trees, okay, when there's heaps of them, the light is obviously going to hit some areas of the trunk, but not the whole area. And you've got lots of trees around, so there's going to be lots of shadows, okay? So you're going to have, you know, the light bounce in different parts of a trunk. You know, a lot of people go through, and I think they make the mistake of highlighting, you know, the light source on the whole length of one side of the tree. It's, kind of takes the realism away, okay, because you're still going to have shadows on that side, even though the light source is hitting it more, because it's going to be covered from the surrounding trees. Now, just coming back in now, I'm using um, a really thin, fine brush now. It doesn't really matter if it's frayed or not, it just has to be really thin and fine. Just reshaping some of those trunks, adding the, the shadow side in now a little bit more. Coming up, doing some of the branches. When you do this, um, like the line I just popped in looks really, really light and it might look a little bit out of place, but when you keep working a little bit more and add a few more in, they tend to just fit in really, really well. So don't be afraid of um, using really light colours to get the contrast. So you can see the, they're really taking some shape now. Adding some more branches in. And then just coming back, doing some more shadows now. The same brush, just a nice, fine, round one. Just adding some more highlights now. When I'm getting towards the end, or when I'm kind of happy with the dimension of what's happening with it, and I start coming back to do some highlights, add some grass and things like that, I do tend to use a clean, finer brush for it. 
So this is practically just like the cadge yellow with just a little bit of the forest green, not much at all, because I really want some highlights now to show up. And you can see I'm doing it sparingly. I'm not just doing this in big blobs all the way across in patterns. So just, you know, really sparingly in some areas. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see some more of our work. This is still a um, work in progress. I haven't quite finished it, but this is where I'm up to it at the moment. Thanks again and take care.